go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 14 of the Ravencast. Today, we got a very interesting story to cover with our new co-host, Perp, who is joining us as a permanent spot of um, our co-host of Ravencast, since Coldfire and Tim's are no longer with us, which will be addressed in a future episode. But today, we'll be talking about the Barefoot Bandit, and Nith has more information on the Barefoot Bandit. Apparently, he's been stealing planes. It's like a big, huge criminal. What's his backstory? So, uh, the Barefoot Bandit basically um, stole about 16 planes or so. He's got about 36 felony charges. Went between the American and U.S. border. Uh, flew, uh, broke into houses, robbed all, not all of it barefoot, but a large portion of it barefoot. His um, overall mark that he would leave after robbing, he never stole money. Um, the mark he would leave would be a footprint to indicate that he was there. Uh, he was on the FBI's like top 10, maybe 15. Not 100% certain. That's why we're going into a documentary on it. But he stole planes, he stole boats, he stole cars, and the dude uh, ended up creating a social media following in the middle of his entire tirade. Which Wait, is did really, he did uh, he do this all? Like, how did he did he do this all by himself? Yeah, yeah, like full blown, all by himself the whole time. He Ow. um, and he wasn't even eighteen. I would like to interject quickly because I actually have heard about this situation a bit myself and i've heard that he actually did one of the like because he used to go into houses and steal shit yeah. one of the times they did that he was with an accomplice yeah um well that was in the beginning he, he did have a friend but his friend got caught yeah Oh, yeah. damn. So there was one instance out of everything that occurred uh, where he ended up um, full-blown, like, having one uh, someone help him. Uh, he tried to start a Patreon while he was in jail. Or not a Patreon, but a uh, GoFundMe to try and fund for uh, flight school. And then they were like, ah, the government was like, ah, no, we're going to take that and use it for uh, the victims <laughs> that you robbed. Even though uh, another, like funny circumstance on that is he one of the people they robbed the plane from uh sent a letter to the judge um around or during the hearing basically to the courts uh hoping for leniency on him because he didn't feel like the like the kid deserved the full penalties of his crimes because he understood um a lot of tabloids, a lot of the media were displaying him as basically a runaway that was trying to escape from like a, a bad situation, I guess, with his family. There's his a lot of the reasoning on what he did and why he did it is still kind of clouded. Um, there was a podcast or an interview that was done with him on some other show. Uh, I found that through Facebook. But for the most part, a lot of it's kind of uh, all over the place with him. There's he not... just did it. Where's his, parent? like, Where's his parents? Like, what happened to his parents? Um. Uh, so he was in an orphanage, and uh, his mom was unfit to take care of him. So he left the orphanage and just went on doing all this. Yeah. He felt like he needed a way to survive, and theft and uh, plane robbery and... How burglaring was his out? I mean, he never actually harmed anyone. He never had a firearm, I'm pretty sure. And for the most part, he was pretty pretty much a genuine criminal. Damn. Yeah. It's just crazy how a young kid could just steal all these planes. Like, did, were anyone on these planes? Or did he just go in, like, like these he airports? Went, he he uh, went into airports and just stole private planes. Like one-seaters. He just stole empty planes? Yeah, pretty much. Jump yeah. on them, start like, them up. It was in the middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder who taught him how to fly. I'm, I wonder if his he, friend was like... He taught him he, himself. No, he taught himself. He taught himself. Yeah, he taught himself Damn. how to fly. He picked up books. He stole books. He stole credit cards. Used money on credit cards for Amazon... Or not Amazon purchases. I'm pretty sure it was Amazon. Uh, he ordered stuff and then off of other people's credit cards and mailed it to an address like in a whole different state of where he was like at. And then he would just go sneak at night after the package got dropped, grabbed it, and then just ran off, basically. Yeah. So he was really a, a smart criminal. 
but uh we'll go ahead and get into the video if that's cool with you Triton. um yeah that's cool um oz you can go ahead and start playing it yeah. Flying in a stolen airplane, Colton's mission was to escape the United States into Canada. Is... But as he quickly <laughs> glanced at the gauges, oh my god, the plane's running out of gas. But he couldn't land at the airport, there'd be federal agents there waiting to arrest his ass. So he finds a flat patch within the mountains, lines up the plane, puts down the flaps, prays to god, and... Bam. Now, thank God he'd actually made it out alive because Colton didn't have his pilot's license. He'd actually never even flown an airplane because Colton was 16 years old, stealing over Damn. six airplanes while committing 67 felonies in three different countries on the run from the FBI for three years. Colton Harris Moore is the most badass kid outlaw I've ever read about. Hold that seat tight because it's going to be a wild ride. Now, Ooh, Colin Harris Moore was never the cool kid in school. The bullies no, picked on him, nobody talked to him, <laughs> and all he wanted was what the other kids had. A clean Fuck pair of shoes, a simple haircut, and parents who just gave a sh**. But his mom was an alcoholic. His dad never paid the child support. He lived in a trailer park and was forced to scrounge for food. But one day, as the bullies were picking a fight with Colton, the new kid in class stands up to all of them. A kid that had just got out of a two-year sentence from Juvenile Hall, Harley Ironwing Davidson. Now, just like Colt, Harley's dad was out of the picture, his mom was a junkie, but Harley had the trappings of wealthy parents, a new pair of shoes, a laptop, and hell, even an iPod. You see, Harley, at the age of 16, had served two years for residential burglary, and they were all stolen. Now, Colton had stolen food from the neighbors, but to have everything a kid in the early 2000s would Can want for free, it? it was enticing, and Harley was gonna teach him. Uh, Oz, pause it. All right, so basically, this kid, was came from nothing and basically just learned how to steal all these airplanes and become this fucking badass criminal from nothing, basically. Well, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do when you have nothing in your life and yet you're smart? You're going to use that intellect in ways that you shouldn't be using your intellect. You're going to become one mm -hmm. of them smarty boy criminals. One of them I think there's still world building like here, but yeah, the story gets a lot greater. Yeah. yeah, this is just yeah, the definitely. small town start, bro. Like, he's going to yeah, end up... He, he Like, we're, we didn't even talk about the first plane he stole. We're talking about food he stole. Damn, yeah. Yeah. We're not even in the, we're not even a juicy part, but you can continue. Meeting at the cul-de-sac at midnight, Harley shows him how to pick a lock, find the hidden spare keys, and lays down some basic rules. Don't rob somebody's house if you know who lives there. Don't turn on the lights. If you ever get caught or spotted, just run and never feel guilty. As per Harley's own words, remember this ain't hurting nobody. Everything I've stolen is insured. They'll just reimburse it through their insurance and get something even better. Wise words from someone who's clearly dealt with an insurance company. Breaking in the dozens of homes over the courses of weeks, Colton's thrill was being able to just eat a good meal, play some video games, and take the spare change you found as lunch money. Now, Colton knew this was bad, but then again, he wasn't hungry anymore, and life was good. But you gotta ask, where were the police in all of this with kids robbing dozens of yeah, homes? Exactly. Well, the we're San Juan Islands where they're from has extreme wealth division. One in three homes in the area are vacation homes, meaning that's a lot of empty houses all how the fuck did the feds not catch these guys? Like, how the fuck? Um, Particularly uh, because of the area yeah. that they grew up in. Yeah, yeah. The, it's the area. They're trying to explain that also, now with the one in three um, houses, the vacation homes and stuff. So, yeah, also, yeah I know, but I'm just yeah. pausing for commentary so I can get my so, own commentary. Yeah. So, uh, with vacation homes, a lot of people leave their shit just out and about a lot of the time. Yeah. So, like, they'll keep money stashed. They'll keep, like, a credit card here and there or whatever in their vacation homes. And for the most part, um, that's pretty much what they do. Like, vacation homes, you know, you're never there. You use it once a month, if that, or once a year or something like that. So, for the most part, yeah, it makes sense for them to use, for to rob vacation homes. It goes unreported. There's no one home to report the, the robbery. Keep in mind, this is before, like, real smart cameras that we have nowadays. That's one of the big factors. Yeah, like, yeah, like the a, ring if, cams and yeah, stuff. Yeah, if you had a ring cam in this point, this dude would have been caught way faster. So, yeah. Uh, I guess we can continue from here, though. Year-round. Yeah, cool. The perfect place for residential burglary. 
But for Colton back at home, life was actually getting worse. His mom is now physically addicted to alcohol. He had tried to check her in the rehab. She said no. He had brought AA handbooks for her. She burned them in front of his face and Child Protective Services were called dozens of times after physical fights broke out between the two. All he wanted was his mom to get her act together so he could be a normal kid and not force this ground for food. But no. She would throw him out in the streets to survive on his own and he would set up a tent in the middle of the forest and there you go, at the age of 15. Now, as the neighbors Damn, noticed their fridge is being raided of frozen pizza and tendies, the murmurs of a mysterious boy who only broke in just to eat spread fast across the island. But other neighbors noticed a lot more than just frozen tendies gone missing. At the crack of dawn, the FBI bust down the door at his mom's house. They had a warrant in hand for Colton Harris Moore, and it wasn't for stealing frozen tendies, but for committing identity theft. His mom was shocked. No way it could have been sweet little Colt. He didn't even live at the house anymore. The FBI called BS on that, searched the home, and yeah, Colt really didn't live there. Now tracking a scent with bloodhounds, they go deep into the woods and come across a tent stuffed at the brim. And as they unzip the door with their pistols drawn out, piles of stuff falls out. We're talking laptops, boxes of jewelry, telescopes, credit cards, driver's licenses, checkbooks, and it all linked back to Colt. But Colt himself was nowhere to be found. Once the trail had gone cold, the feds wrapped it up and called it a day. He was still hiding in that forest. Now, the next morning, a handwritten note shows up on his mom's doorstep. Cops were here. Everything's on lockdown. I'm leaving for Weichi won't be back. Cops want to play, huh? Well, it's no little game. It is war. Colt had watched the whole thing go down from far away. Now, although the sheriffs there locally had no resources to actually catch him, the FBI now would bring in professional manhunters, made multiple warrants for his arrest, and place wanted posters all over town. And Colton knew he couldn't go back home. He was truly on his own. And Never for a town that didn't thing. have a lot going on, everyone was focused on trying to catch him. Now, he started stealing cars and boats and purchased lockpicks and night vision goggles with the stolen credit cards. He would hide out in the empty homes when the FBI helicopters were overhead. The police had pulled up to several homes he was in the middle of breaking into and managed to escape every time. Homeowners came back to seeing Colt just chilling on their couch, <laughs> only to vanish out the door the next without a trace. And the local newspaper was listing burglaries by the day for months. So to outrun the FBI with professional manhunters for months at the age of 15, I'm not gonna condone it, but that's impressive. But if we're as smart as we think Colt is, that's he had one impressive. nasty habit, leaving the lights on. Positive and when quick. residents noticed the lights on- That's just really impressive that a 15 year old could outrun the FBI for months and then just like fucking, just have like outrun and, go and literally just disappear. Like homeowners just, how do the homeowners not shoot him when they see a random dude just chilling yeah, on even, the couch? Yeah, even Diddy couldn't escape the FBI. Yeah, even Diddy couldn't escape the FBI. That's a good example. How could, how can't someone like a rich celebrity escape the FBI, but this kid could? That's just weird. Well, he's smart, um, bro. So in the longer version, <laughs> it was because uh, every night he would move his tent. So he, he, he never stayed in one spot after the first FBI raid. He never stayed in one spot. So every night when... uh. He did have a tent and it wasn't in someone's house. He just kept moving it. That's really smart. Like really impressive. That's really smart thinking, you know. Because if you just if you don't stay in one spot, then they then it's so hard for them to find to not to not find you. That would also explain yeah. why the uh, dogs couldn't keep the scent trail. Because the beauty yeah, of it kept on so moving is... all over the place. Mm. Yeah. Well, he, he knew those woodlands like the back of his hand because he grew up there. He probably knew those woods better than those cops did. And you'd be able to lose the scent of a dog just running through it like a, a stream or something anyway. Oh. So he used uh, yeah. Yeah. alcohol or ammonia. That'll cloak the scent yeah. too. Oh, yeah. No, um, he did talk about one time he was hiding under a bunch of foliage right near the cops and they didn't see him. Boy had maxed out his stealth stat. He had Skyrim stealth at like <laughs> ten, bro, at a hundred. He had his Skyrim stealth at a hundred at the age of fifteen. That's fucking like I'm. Yeah, it is. Like, this is why I love covering this guy. No one thinks of like a fourteen-year-old capable of doing this shit. Well, he clearly had a hard life, so he would have learned some real hard life lessons early. He <laughs> and yeah. He had yeah. the camouflage skills of fucking Peter from, uh, like, uh, Hunger Games.
Yeah. yeah, he had he had street smarts, but he had book smarts as well. Yeah. You know, to to sit and watch like people taking off in an aircraft and work it out in your head how to like get in, start it up, you know, to keep it keep it on the runway till it reaches like max speed and then let it go. Like he he didn't land it too well the first time, but that's impressive, man. Then he can impressive. even fly it without like a license, without like actually yeah. like full blown. <laughs> knowledge at such a young just age. self-taught like yeah yeah just self-taught, if he... no knowledge but here's another thing though how many trades or how many other fucking how many of these like type of things that people do every day like driving and shit is self-taught too when you think about yeah. it so it kind of makes sense like if you can learn how to drive a car because no doubt, like, I mean, he's robbing houses and shit, but who knows if he, he did steal cars. I know, but it's a bit unprecedented like, to be, like, that young and yeah. knowing how to fly a plane. It's fucking wild. Um, that's why I love this story. Like, I remember when uh, I was a kid and this shit was, like, on the news and they were doing, like, the whole media coverage of this. And I was just blown away. I think I was, like, 16, 19 around there, some shit like that. Or I might have been younger. <laughs> When uh, what year? Yeah, that means I was alive. Um, somewhere Irish, ten years you younger. Check, Irish, can you check what year this shit occurred uh -huh. with the Barefoot Bandit, real quick? Yeah, let me check. Be in the early two thousands, I think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it was like two thousand. Looking at the fashion and and the like the style of the footage and stuff, it seems to be about the early two thousands. You know, yeah, I know because I did a little research. It's definitely like I think it was like 2011. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it might have been mm. a little bit. Earlier. Irish, what's the answer? Hang on, I'm so uh, 2010. Oh, uh, well, it oh, was so before 2010. Uh, well, he got was... caught in 2010. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so, so this happened. Run, he got caught. Yeah. He was. He got caught in 2007. No, he got caught 2010. No, he got caught in 2010. Okay, so about 2007 he started his spree because he got yeah he's uh, 2000 yeah because it's three years yeah 2007 yeah. yeah so that's fucking crazy that in 2007 that's definitely insane yeah. I was and definitely doing those which don't get me wrong those times were like definitely like we had technologies but we didn't have ring doorbell can we didn't have like the advanced technologies we have in 2024 well not so, just that but this is fre like this is like six years or so after 9-11 so the police i was about got, to like, say yeah yeah so yeah. this is after 9-11 to the point where all the police forces got their little fucking fundraiser bonus basically well where that and also where's shit. where's all of the where's all of the national security for like stray air, air aircraft and stuff in the sky and like all of these technical measures that they were supposed to put in after 9-11 yeah, and this dude can just walk into an, uh, an airfield and just get a get a private plane and piss off somewhere. Like, okay, it, man, he's, I, a, it, he's yeah. a legend. He's a little hero, man. He's my little hero. He, he, he's a little American. If a fifteen year old, if a fifteen year old can do that, then anybody can do that, and that's exactly. dangerous, really dangerous. Yeah. Well, yep. I, think the, probably happen I, I, again. I think the reason the manhunt for him went so big isn't just because of the amount of shit he stole and the expensive like shit that he did. I think one of the big factors of it is that is the fact that he basically just made in in retrospect made fun of the federal crimes or the, like the federal division that's in charge of like the airlines and shit because yeah. they have to report a plane being gone like that's a thing. Yeah, Especially he might have looked like clowns. Like, no, yeah, for, yeah, he made them all years. look bad. So I th I feel I have no doubt that there's probably some cop that goes to the bar every night just wishing he caught him like a year sooner. Yeah, he's all retired and bitter and shit <laughs> he's sitting like, at the yeah, bar. Fucking fifteen year old. Yeah, like all raging <laughs> and shit, bro. Ruined my career. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely, this def he's definitely do. He's probably at the bar right now as we're recording, <laughs> thinking like that, thinking that. Ah, oh, damn! I should have caught that fifteen old bastard. I ain't gonna lie, like. I kind of don't blame the cops, dude. <laughs> like, he made it, he made him look fucking bad when you think about it. Like, 30, 16 planes? 30 yeah, but how does a kid do this, though? It's like, and like, that's just I think scary, 20, though. 
I think he stole like twenty cars or some shit. Like it's a high amount of cars he stole too. So like the story pretty... gets a whole lot better. Yeah. yeah. So let's go ahead and get back into the fucking video. That's cool. In the one neighbor's house who was gone on vacation, they called the cops. Now, dozens of officers surrounded the home without the sirens and lights. He couldn't run this time, and he had been caught red-handed. Now, at the age of 16, any charges Colton would face would not show up on his record as an adult. Theoretically, he could still turn his life around. And while his mom often made excuses for his criminal behavior, this time, the kid was going to have to face the music. So Colt pleaded guilty to three counts of residential burglary, and with this history of evading the FBI for months at a time, sentenced to three years at a maximum security juvenile jail. And the entire town could sleep at night. Now, while in juvenile jail, Colt once again was the weird kid. Kids pushed him around, stole his commissary money, but these weren't just kids this time. They were full-on gang members. I'm a wigger. So, go figure. I'm just so he isolates <laughs> himself and filled his days reading about flying airplanes and focused on his schoolwork. His grades got better. He did as he was told. He had planned to get a college degree once he got out, and it seemed that with some structure, he was actually going to change for the better. So in 10 months of this, Good behavior. He was transferred into a fenceless group home. The kid that had outrun the FBI. But now with the freedom to wear the clothes he wanted and be around kids who weren't in there for violent assault charges, Colt was flourishing. And although he still had two years left in a sentence, it, it felt like he was given another chance at life. As the guards did their midnight body count, they noticed the window unlocked. The bed was empty. Colton was missing. He had escaped with an hour head start. That now, front page news like, striking fear into the locals. Residents were furious. The kid they. This is shit I never heard <laughs> on the Barefoot Bandit. And I'm gonna be honest. You're a shitty fucking guard if you literally, like, let a kid not only unlock a window and escape, but on top of that, knew he was good at evading police. Like, they knew he was good at evading police. Why the fuck... Why, why the fuck are you going to sit there and, like... I mean, even on good behavior, I guess. But, like, put him in, putting him in, like, a place with no fence, sure. But, like, the guards should do their jobs. This is another example no, no, of but police they, they should have not. They should have not put... They should have not put him in a fenceless prison just because of how good he was at outrunning cops. Because it's like, yeah, he had good behavior, but it's like it only takes one chance for him just to run away, and that's what happened. It's not even so about only... the fence, fenceless. It's just like the fact that he was in a, a like an area where he was sleeping, where like he could just leap through the window. Like, why aren't the windows barred? I'm also surprised they didn't put an ankle monitor on him. That would have been the smarter option. I don't know if they had that. Yeah. They That's did. They did. They, they did. sucked. They were worse than the ones we have now. But they were. You think they bought a. Sorry. Keep going. Uh, I mean, like, if they put it on him, there was no doubt that he was smart enough to slip out of that shit anyway. Without trying. Well, no. He, he might have found it a way. He would have found a way. Well, as soon as you cut it off, an like, alarm goes in off. Opinion, in my opinion, they should have not put him in a fenceless prison. Y'all can disagree with me on that, but they should have not. They they were I, stupid for that. Should I'd have argue kept them this. in a fence prison. Yeah, I'd argue this, right? Maybe it was intentional by corrections or whoever makes those kind of decisions to move inmates to places. Maybe, maybe he was a model prisoner and maybe they saw him getting, like, bullied and harassed and shit and they're like oh you know he's all right just put him somewhere else maybe they thought that or maybe they thought if we put him there he's a little shit he's gonna re-offend so let's put him there and see what he does that's a smart idea yeah i mean maybe to beat him but the guards see. didn't do the fucking job so putting them there was the useless. guards never do their job bro didn't you watch <laughs> epstein like the guards even in maximum security they don't do their jobs bro <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's definitely just wild, though, that a 16-year-old could evade the police as well, so well. Mm, yeah. The way he did. Yep. But, uh, yeah, let's go and get back into it, man. All right, let's do it. 
could spend all of this time trying to catch and to think that he wouldn't escape. I mean, come on. His mom went to the press and pleaded for him to turn himself in and Colt was left with two choices. Now, escaping from juvenile jail could add up to four years on top of your sentence, but the police were so desperate to catch him because of the whole goose chase, they publicly said they would only give him an additional 28 days if he turned himself in. So he'd get out of 19, start his life with nothing on his record or hide his identity with the warrant out for his arrest for the rest of his life. And as a 17 year old kid now with his brain not fully developed, the kid kept running. So with the heat on his mom's house, Colt thought maybe his old friend Harley Ironwing Davidson could give him a place to hide out, maybe even some help. But soon he found out that Harley was now in prison. He had tried to steal a thousand pound safe from his mom's church. So with nowhere to go, Colt began breaking in the homes, purchasing the lockpicks, the night vision, and got stolen credit cards, all to make his burglaries even <laughs> Bro, mate. What? This is some trailer park boy shit. <laughs> this is some like Looney Tunes shit, bro. Like this is definitely like some movie uh, shit. I, I don't even believe this I, is I, real. Trailer park boys. Oh god, dude, that's fucking wild. A thousand pounds safe. What was his game plan? I gotta know it, dude. Like, I gotta know the idea of this. How ice. the fuck are you supposed to get a thousand pound safe, like, lifted and moved in the first place? Keep in like, mind, per like, at a couple of the jobs I worked at, they had, like, not a thousand pound safe, but, like, a heavy fucking safe. Those are bolted in. So, how the fuck <laughs> yeah, are you even gonna get out the fucking door? If it's not well, a thing, you use those like, movable A frames, you know, like that you take like engines out of cars with. There's yeah. movable ones of those, but I doubt this kid was that smart. He was probably in there with a pallet jack or something. Oh, who knows? Imagine having the name of Harvey Iron Wing Davis and you're this <laughs> fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> the name dude, just fits it name. so well, dude. I love it. That uh, just, <laughs> We just had to pause it right there. Like, I was losing my shit. I'm not going to lie. That shit funny. Um, honestly, know, but, the stream uh, is kind of fucking up. It's loading for me. Oh, it's glitching up. Uh, it's no, but uh, imagine being the judge and reading the report. You tried to steal. You can shit. pause it. Wait, no. Uh, Oz, can you close the stream and then relaunch it? It's like glitching up on me. Yeah, sure, bud. Yeah. Oh, can you guys? No, I don't know what are we up to. Just real quick. It's like... Howie! Calm down, trains, dude. Shit's working. Alright, oh, let's try launching it again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Just imagine trying to defend this kid. A thousand Sir, pounds I know. A That's insane, car. right? Like, oh. like one thing's to steal a safe. Oh, Another do. thing's to steal a safe that you can't even fucking lift. Wait, how long is the documentary? No. Can you can you like, pull that up real quick, Oz? Yeah, sure. It's about almost halfway through. It goes for 28, 28 minutes and seven seconds. All right, we'll We're keep about halfway through. Good. And for three months, Colt is breaking into yeah, dozens of homes and the police have one, no one, idea one. where he's at. Until the police were in pursuit of a Mercedes Benz no, driving a oh, hundred God, miles an hour right down now. the road. My now the car clients. veered off in the parking lot, crashed the into a tree, place. and when oh, police Jesus, pulled up, dude. it looked as if the driver had jumped out of the car while it was moving and ran off into the forest. Now Damn. inside the car, they found a backpack that was filled with the stolen credit cards, driver's licenses, night vision goggles, and a digital camera that had these photos on it. It was Colton Harris Moore with that goddamn <laughs> Mona Lisa smile. Soon the image was on wanted posters That's all over the dope, county. Bro. Now, throughout that summer, hundreds of residents called 911 with That's encounters and sightings awesome. of Colt. He even had encounters with the police, but every time he kept He's getting leave some sexy But how is that possible? You yeah. might ask. It's estimated that 80% of all oh, burglaries are committed by people on drugs. But Colt, he was sober. Every house he broke into always had the alcohol untouched. He didn't have a car, so they couldn't pull him over. He lived off of the grid, and most importantly, the kid was young and healthy. But as the legend of Colton Harris Moore grew with this Facebook I'll fan right page back. at 15,000 members, Yay. the town was on edge. The gun shops sold out of ammos and shotguns, security cameras what? were placed everywhere, and yeah. residents assumed every crime in the town was Colt's fault. I mean, a 17-year-old burglar with nothing left to lose? Yeah, that's gonna keep you up at night.
stalking the local airport on the Orcas Islands for days. Colt was hiding out in the forest, watching the takeoffs and landings. He knew when the staff worked, where they would be at, and took action. Before sunrise, he walked up to a brand new Cessna 182 Skyline. He had flown this plane in video games hundreds of times. He had knew roughly how to fly it, maybe even how to start it. He found the keys on the seat, read the owner's manual, Why rolled the plane out to the runway, no, and without much thought, started the engine and took off. Now, flying into the mountains, the Colin couldn't awesome believe it. That adrenaline... Yeah, sure. Why the fuck would you... Okay, first of all, the pilots are fucking stupid. Why the fuck are you just leaving the keys on the seat like that? With it open like that? Are you dumb? Well, they never thought their planes would be stolen after 9-11. That's my best guess. And, uh... I don't know if retarded. planes... I don't know if all planes retarded. come with keys. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if all planes come with keys. It could just be like a you Lucky pull a choke out sense. and push a button. You know, no, like no, a no, lot of no, 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 a lot of things no, 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 start no, no, like Oz, that. You not you did not pay attention. They just said that they put the keys on the seat. Oh yeah, well that's retarded. Yeah, they I missed the that. Yeah, that's seat. fucking retarded. I love yeah. the fact the gun stores ran out of ammo and guns. That's great. Well, at least it wasn't toilet paper and water. At least it wasn't America. Wait, so what part are you at? All right, so uh, they he was watching the plane. He, like I love the fact that he was studying the uh airstrips and timed his fucking theft perfectly. I think that's mm -hmm. fucking wild. Um, yeah, and creative as shit because keep in mind he's like sixteen, seventeen, some shit like that, and he did that like. That's some tactician level shit. He was sitting there like, I'm gonna read the fucking spy manuals. I'm gonna read the fucking airplane manuals. I'm gonna know what plane Wild it is and when it, when to go. Like, boy was, boy had big brain. Boy had big brain. Mm -hmm. He had more dome than I do. Oh, dude, just imagine, uh, like going to the airfield to go grab your plane, and you're like, where is Where'd it? it go? <laughs> We're, we're, we're happy. Go? I was just here. What the fuck? Hey, did you move my plane? No. <laughs> and then Son you find out it got, like, like it got crashed like fucking 20 <laughs> kilometers away. <laughs> to a whole nother state. A whole nother country. Because he was flying between the US and Canada, which is fucking wild. Yeah. Yeah. So, Oz, uh, we can go and continue. That's cool first of actually flying a plane without a license. Now you may wonder, how was this possible? Wouldn't air traffic control see a random plane that never reported itself and maybe think it's a little suspicious? Well, in America, if you don't cross any restricted flying areas and stay under 18,000 feet, you're free to fly wherever the f you want. But you see in flying, landing is the hardest part. And once Colt looked at the gas gauge and realized he was almost out because he never ch checked it before he left, he needed the land now. So he finds a flat patch within the mountains, lines up the plane, prays to God, and The landing gear was destroyed. The propeller was twisted up. And once Colt woke up from being knocked out, he threw up all over the plane. After six months of no reported break-ins or burglaries within the area, locals thought Colt maybe was done, maybe even dead, but his war against the police was still very on. So arriving in the town, six months later, he gets into a police car, he steals the officer's cell phone, ticket book, breathalyzer, laptop, and his MP15 assault rifle with the box of rounds. Oh, so far, Colt oh, hadn't harmed anyone physically, oh, but now he was armed. Oh, Who knew what he was capable of? My if God. it gets backed into Why a corner a because of here? everything that he's done, I, you know, if he has a weapon, I, I wouldn't put it past him to use it. Now, while okay. some saw the act as daring, others loved. Quick that a kid was stick I made I made a statement before the video. I was like, he don't he never stole no guns or money. Nah, I'm wrong. That was fucked. He did. He did. He stole a fucking straight up gun straight out of a car. A fucking A little bit car. of research I did. He had a <laughs> it was a handgun in this documentary that I watched. So it may have been multiple firearms that he took over his little career. Damn. But uh he did a random, like, quote-unquote warning shot when these cops came to, like, find one of his tents. Yeah. Um, he, did, he didn't try to kill anyone. He just, like, fired randomly just to, like, throw them off while he took off. Yeah. But, yeah.
He never tried to hurt anyone, which I respect it to the cops, living life on his terms. A Robin Hood that didn't give back to the poor, but instead had a fan club selling merch with his face on it. And Colin made sure to give his fans a great show. So on September 8th, he steals a quarter of a million dollar boat and heads towards the Friday Harbor. There, he stalks the local airport and steals a million dollar airplane. This time, he made sure it was filled with gas and crash lands it all the way back on the Orcas Islands. Now, the police knew he was there on the Orcas Islands, maybe at the airport or the dock. Somehow, he gets through the police barricade, steals a twin engine boat, goes full speed all the way up towards Canada and illegally crosses the border. So over the course of the week, he commits some more burglary, steals a couple more cars, and road trips all the way across to Creston, Canada, literally the middle of North America. There, he steals an Escalade and heads down the Bonnevers Ferry in Idaho. Mind you, this is a kid doing all of this. Now, the one smart thing Colt never did was fill his car up with gas at a gas station. You know, they have security cameras, they track the cars. Easily, the police could see where you are probably going. So if a car ran out of gas that Colt stole, he would just leave it there, break into another one, and steal that until he got to his next spot. Pretty smart kid, honestly. A day later, he steals another airplane and flies all the way from Idaho back to Granite Falls, Washington, where he actually lands the plane safely in the middle of the mountains. Now, pretty soon, the local hometown once again had a huge burst in burglaries. He's doing the usual, living in the empty vacation homes, eating stolen tendies, and also bringing a ton of heat. You see, aircraft theft is one of the rarest forms of theft in the world. Now, rumors at the time were that it was some rogue pilot who had stolen the plane to go on a quick trip to impress some girl he was seeing, but they couldn't be any more wrong. It was a kid. Now, even with the police swarming his hometown, Colt starts breaking into grocery stores, stealing thousands of dollars in cash and leaving footprints with the tagging, see ya. Now, he's doing all of this barefoot and the media christened him with the name, the Barefoot Bandit. A stolen airplane and grocery store burglary complete with telltale chalk outlines of bare feet has folks on Washington State San Juan Islands worried the burglar known as the Barefoot Bandit has returned. At first I thought it was a joke. Police think the burglary is the handiwork Colton Harris Moore. The teen is suspected of stealing airplanes, boats, and luxury cars and breaking into dozens of homes and businesses in the area, only to disappear into the woods without a trace. Now, people fell in love with Colt. He had a huge fan base. Mind you, it's 2010, the recession's still on, bankers got bailed out, corporations got billions, the common man was kind of screwed out of all of it. So in rejection of all of that, Colt took life into his own hands and was living life on his own terms, outsmarting not only the police and the DHS and the FBI, but the government itself. Though by now, city officials on the island informed all of the residents that there were now dozens of armed bounty hunters stalking the forest looking for Colt creeping in their backyards, searching in the empty homes, but <laughs> Colt was already long gone. On the morning of May 30, 2010, a letter shows up on the front doorstep of an Oregon animal hospital. Drove by, had some extra cash. Please use this money for the care of the animals. Colton Harris Moore, AKA the Barefoot Bandit. Right, yeah, for his cool. legion of Facebook fans. I that's cool. So uh, he started like the Facebook, the Facebook fan page like kind of blew up overall as he continued his escapades. But one of the big things that he was very, like, adamant on was giving money to random shit as he was on his heists and his runs. Because he just naturally did it to try and show some remorse for his actions or to show some sympathy towards, like, what he was doing. Yeah, he was a heartless bastard that just didn't care about anyone and killed people. He actually kind of, like, felt guilty a little bit. Yeah, but, like, overall, I mean, the fact he stole, like, planes and shit is pretty fucking wild. And pretty love, insane. Yeah, and I love the fact that he was just so, like, he knew what he was doing. Every step he made in his high spree and his scheming and his running around, Literally, every, every bit of it was pre-planned, premeditated, and thought through. There was never an instance, really, where it became a point where he just flat out was like, Aw, shit. What do I do here? No, he planned every exit strategy, he planned every break-in, he planned every, like, instance of everything he was carrying through. And I can't... Uh, and there, there's 28, 50-year-old thieves... That can't even 
fucking figure out what to fucking rob from. Or can't even escape when they rob something. Oh, what's up, Sheriff? What's up? Welcome to the stream. We're on the Ravencast show. Nice. On the Barefoot Bandit, yeah. Watching the Barefoot Bandit. Fucking crazy. Yeah, it's and fucking... literally like, every step in his career. Yeah, every step. When I saw your camera pull up, planned. I thought and you were like, Irish. Like in the courts, yeah, it's horrible that he premeditated everything because it makes it, it, you know it's harder to defend that. But like, to be fair, he had a shitty home, and this was his yeah. idea of getting out and like having a life to some caliber. And it's so not like he just left. He, he even tried to he even tried to fix his life before leaving and doing all this. Like he tried to get his mom help, and instead, his mom threw him out the street. Yeah, and so I think ultimately, like, is he a criminal? One hundred percent, sure. Is he a criminal with the intent of killing somebody? I don't think so. I think his whole thing was scaring away like nah. a rat. He would have done it. Thief. If he's this smart and he wanted to kill someone, he would have done it. Exactly. So no one was really at risk. What do you think, Perp? What do you think of this so far, of everything? Uh, I think it's crazy that he's this smart, and I think it's crazy that people were willing to, like, buy the gun store out. (laughs) Like, it's not like he's that dangerous, like, he's gonna, like, murder your family. He usually only robs homes that people aren't aren't home. Yeah. Yeah, but I I think, like, the donation in the animal hospital is just, like, one of the instances of him, like, giving money away in, like, a nice fashion. There were a couple other cases, I think, throughout the heist. Well, it's because he got so much uh, publicity, he wanted to look like a Robin Hood. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and keep going, Oz. Yeah. Gotta say, that's a smooth move. I mean, who could hate a kid that was from a rough home who just loved some animals? But what it really implied was, you can't catch me. Because Colt had stolen a full-on racing boat and drove all the way towards Oregon where he had talked over the phone with some attorneys about selling the rights to his life story for a potential movie. (laughs) But people knew the story just couldn't end well. We're talking stolen planes, (laughs) stolen guns, stolen boats. So another attorney's office comes forward and makes a deal with Colt. Now you see, an anonymous donor said that if Colt turns himself in, Colt would get $50,000 and the attorney's office would represent him at court all for free. But that deal was to expire within five Five days. We're talking about a fugitive collecting his own bounty. Unheard of. But five days later, not a word from Colt. <laughs> that anonymous donor is still to this day unknown. What now the FBI was, was showing up to his mom's house every day. Harboring a fugitive, it's Pause a felony. It but quick. all she wanted to know was, was <laughs> What if the anonymous him? donor was just a Fed? Probably no, the, uh, like a Fed with a big that paycheck. That would be funny. That yeah, that funny. would that would make sense because he's Dude, literally like clowning them. I'm tired them. of chasing you. Just hang yourself and make my day. You know what we I said earlier on. about that cop that like <laughs> sat at the bar because he wished he caught him. That's the guy that offered him the fifty grand. Yeah, just, <laughs> hey, we were literally <laughs> people. <laughs> people. <laughs> it probably was too. <laughs> I Fucking mean, crazy things have happened. But yeah, we'll continue. I just thought it was funny, but he stole it. Sunny even alive. She would have fallen deeper so into the pit of alcoholism. Now, over the course of a week, he starts stealing several more cars and starts road tripping all the way to Yankton, South Dakota. Now, arriving at midnight, he needed a place to kind of hang out. So he cased out several homes in the area until he found the one with no cars in the driveway. He thought if they weren't home by midnight, they were probably gone on vacation. Hungry and filthy, he puts his clothes in the washer at the house. He heats up the oven and makes some frozen tendies for himself. He goes upstairs, gives himself a haircut with the trimmer he found. He finally hopped in the shower to relax after a long week of road tripping. At 3 a.m., the Clark family had come back from a long vacation. With their eyes half asleep, they headed inside the house with their bags ready to just pass out. But something was off. The TV was still on. Jello containers were stacked on the floor. Frozen tendies were heated up. Now, as the dad walks into all of the rooms, he notices at the end of the hallway, the bathroom door is slightly open. And as he reaches out to open the door, it slams shut. The dad, a 340 pound dude, muscles the door open until a naked man covered in lotion sprints towards out the basement. Now the dad's chasing, get out of the house, get out of the house. And by the time he got to the basement with this adrenaline pumping, a red laser pops up on his chest. 
Colt let it be known that he was armed. Now, the dad locks the basement, runs to the car with his family inside, breaking the garage door as he's backing out and heads over to his neighbor's house to call 911. Now, Colt's freaking out. He doesn't know what to do. His clothes were still in the washer. I mean, he's literally trapped in the basement. Minutes later, as the officers swarm the house on the lookout for a naked man covered in lotion with a the gun, there was no way on God's green <laughs> earth Colt was going to get out of this one. Apartment. But once the SWAT team bashed in the door and the canines were let loose, sure. and after an hour of searching every nook and cranny of that house, no one was inside. So with the forest close by, bloodhounds and helicopters with thermal cameras are searching all over the area. But Colt had escaped. And this time it was close. Holy. Now you see Colt had smashed the washer to grab <laughs> open his clothes, spilling gallons of water into the basement, grabbed his bag, and because he was so skinny, slipped out of the basement window, broke into the neighbor's house, and stole their car keys and dipped out real fast. And after the Clark family was shown a mugshot of Colton, they confirmed Damn, that the naked man shit. with the gun covered in lotion was Colton Harris Moore. Now, while the FBI didn't know exactly where he was headed or where he was, they had a rough idea. Colt loved to steal though, near that, small that, airports. Oh, 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 now, within oh, the week, quick. Homeland Security held meetings with... Pause it. Yeah. That dad yeah, is a pussy. pussy. Like, honestly, you didn't fucking fight him or kill him been a big pussy and you must not care. you left your kids at the house like they said he left the kids at the house and they even take them to the neighbor's house you wanted your kids to get no, they murdered were in the you house. fucking they're, they're cop. in the car he investigated the house because he probably saw the lights on that's shit. still stupid that's still honestly this guy's a pussy ass father i think he was honestly, i think he I was see, defending sorry yeah but he didn't even take his kids with him he just left his kids at the car honestly Hey, dude, if I see your wife, I'm fucking her and giving your ki kids a better father, bitch. <laughs> you can continue. Wait, hold up. The I think this is the closest, like, instance of him almost getting caught so far. Mm. Throughout the, the yep. whole charade. That's the thing. Yeah. Dad didn't even fucking shoot him or, like, fucking like, fight him. He Bro, just ran like a pussy. The dad had a laser on him. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was trying to say before, like he was all he was defending his family and his household until that dude pulled the gun that's got a like a freaking IR scope on it. Like he had the fucking Death Star beam on his ass. Yeah, wait, wait, if a dude had a gun though, like wouldn't you wouldn't you take your kids out of the car though if a dude had a gun? It's safer for them to be in the car than it is for them to be in the house. Yeah, but, yeah, okay. oh, yeah, but what if he walked out and saw him in a car? He would have just killed the kid. Like, if this guy was crazy, because you never know, this guy could have had mental problems. Good thing Colton was nice and didn't do that. I mean, you're not wrong, but at the same time, it's like kind of a stretch. I mean, I mean that's the thing. I understand. I, I'm like, gonna be on. Like, I understand. Keep in mind. Hold on. I understand. The dad was sleep deprived. From a vacation or some shit. He just got home at like 3 in the morning. I understand that, but it's like, at the same time, if you're a dad, you're supposed to protect your kids. And it's like, at the same time, it's like, my point is, what if Colton wasn't like all nice like that? What if Colton was someone who was crazy as shit and had, the mur had murder on their mind and saw the kids and the wife in the car and just decided, you know what? You never well, I'm going to the kill these the kids and I don't give a shit. Yeah. And that's the thing. Um, And that's the thing. There's, there are people like that too. A hundred thousand percent. Oh yeah, you're not that's wrong. That's why I bring that like, up. I mean, you're not what? wrong. The dad failed at being a dad, but like at the same time, it's three in the morning. You just got home. You're tired. You're not aware. Yeah, but uh, but I wouldn't. If this was me, I wouldn't care if it's three in the morning. I would be like, oh shit, my kids are outside. And what if this guy's mentally insane? I would still think, even if it's three in the morning and I'm driving from vacation, because it's like it doesn't matter. Your kids should come first. Your wife should come first. And the fact that's why that he went into the house first. Home. He didn't bring them with. That's why he went into the house first. Yeah. Just and he it. escaped. He escaped yeah, straight yeah, away yeah, as I soon as that, as soon as that I IR that, laser but, hit him, well, he was like, "Nope, that, I'm out of here." It doesn't. It still doesn't. It still doesn't. Um, it still doesn't take away my criticism that he should have at least removed the kids from the situation instead of just leaving them there. Because, like I said, what he if Colton was some mentally training? ill guy? He locked him in the oh, basement. What? He locked what yeah, but, yeah, but, him well, the well, hold, on, hold on, hold on. He got out of the basement, and what if this guy was so crazy that he just... Because that's the thing. You lock someone in the basement. Um, People are insane, and I've seen situations... I've heard of news stories where people just break, punch the wall over and over, and get out. Yeah. 
people are crazy. Like that's what I'm telling you. People are insane, and that's why you just that's why it's just you have to play it safe. That's all I'm saying. Is the dad should have made it no. should have played it more safe. But but thank. I mean, you're not wrong. But that's like, all I'm saying. No, you're right. But like at the same time, he kind of did. Def- protect his kids because they inevitably lock the fucking no he did he no i'm not saying he did i'm just know. saying he should have did a better he job. could he definitely could have did a better job but uh we'll go ahead yeah. and keep going into we are this. on that like i understand yeah, he like, did like just he weird. did protect them like it, he it's did lock weird... him in the basement i'm wondering how much of the story is legitimate though like on this reported wise because at like three in the morning you're tired the the dude probably didn't explain the, like to the police properly Regarding the investigation, yeah, you're but not, at the same it time, it's still he should have like shock, all that kind of shit. That's why I'm. But uh, in conclusion, that's why. But I in conclusion, no, he should have did that. But wait, we can um uh, unpause it. Yeah, go ahead. Every yeah, private plane owner in all of the surrounding states warning them of the barefoot bandit. They told the pilots to lock their planes, make sure they were safe, don't leave the keys on the seat. And Cole actually knew about these meetings because he had saw Homeland Security going around. Now, for a week, Colton was waiting out in the forest near the Monroe County Airport, you know, reading the magazines he took, surviving off the food he stole, and he was waiting to find the perfect plane to escape the country. Now, Colton knew his limits. He would only steal planes that he had flown in video games, which is insane to think about. And on the 4th of July, that moment happened. During the sunrise, Colt snuck into the hangar and rolled out a brand new Cessna 400, about a $700,000 plane with the keys on the seat. He made sure to fill it up with gas, went through the pilot's checklist, started the engine, took off in the plane, and headed down south. Happy 4th of July. Now, doing the math, the Cessna 400 should be able to go all the way to Cuba on one tank of gas if there was no crazy winds. Now, Cuba's got its benefits. There's no extradition treaty, and even though Colt didn't speak Spanish, he figured it out. But instead of Cuba, he had actually flown towards the Bermuda Triangle and, of course, started the run out of gas and needed to land ASAP. Now, flying over water is dangerous. There is no emergency landing, but luckily, Colt was near some islands. So in between the sand and the palm trees, he finds a patch of land, lines up the planes, puts down the flaps, prays to God, and he lands sw- As the wheels touch the ground, they got stuck in the wet sand, absolutely destroying the aircraft. And it would set off the emergency locator transmitter. He managed to keep it level somehow. As you can see, the nose is in the grass. He got out of that plane reportedly uninjured and headed into the island. Because within seconds, it had sent a uh, SOS signal to the U.S. Coast Guards via GPS. And Colt knew he needed to get the hell out of there. Now, when the U.S. Coast Guard received the signal, they contacted the owner of the Cessna 400, Mr. Miller. You know, to see if they actually needed the help in the Bahamas. Was it real? Was it a false alarm? Now, imagine yourself owning a $700,000 plane in Indiana. But today, it's the 4th of July. You're relaxing. But you get a call from the U.S. Coast Guards about your plane crashing in the Bahamas. You would be freaked out. (laughs) Now, this came as a shock because remember when Homeland Security held those meetings with all the private plane owners warning them of this kid plane thief? Well, the owner of that plane, Mr. Miller, wasn't there. And after the staff at the hangar confirmed the Cessna 400 wasn't there anymore, the U.S. Coast Guard and Bahamian Defense Force were told the craft was stolen. And most likely, it was Colton Harris Moore in the fifth plane he had stolen. Now, within minutes of the crash landing, Colton walked barefoot into the jungle and towards the first site of civilization. Now, he had actually picked a really good time to come to the Bahamas. It was 4th of July weekend. Tourists are everywhere. So a random white kid in the city, it makes sense. So as Colt broke into some cars and some homes, he had survived squatting in the empty vacation homes plastered all across the island. But as the week went on, the military locked down all of the airports. Police were brought in from other islands and wanted posters were placed all across of Colt's face. Bahamas police have been searching for the fugitive for days since his stolen plane was found ditched offshore, but he'd been staying a step ahead of the manhunt. Colby Curry said Harris Moore had a beer in his bar Tuesday night. He just looked like the average guy, just came in to get a drink. He didn't really look like Can we pause no one terrified. Look at Still. So this is the part in the documentary, I think, where they ended up making the folk song about him after his arrest and shit. Because the folk song's from the Bahamas, and they called them the Barefoot to Bend It. That shit was fucking funny.
Hell yeah. I hope they play it. Yeah. They probably won't. Right. Probably will. Continue. Hopefully. Continue. Yeah, go ahead. The FBI's wanted poster warns Harris Moore could be dangerous. Bahamas police have promised to yeah, intensify their hunt for him. The island was small, but where else could he go? Yeah. An so island hop dangerous. away, it was the party on the bluff. Music blasting, tiki torches, cheap liquor, tourists partying all on the harbor. But from the ocean, a boat glides in towards the dock, and a white boy yells, Did you hear about the plane I crashed? Music cuts, and a local replies, Who are you? Colin Harris. Holy hell, this was the kid from the wanted posters, armed and dangerous, stolen planes all over the world. But the local just played it cool. He asked Colt why he was so far from home. Too many cops, so uh... Where are your cops? Then the local replied, Well, we don't really have that many cops. We'll call them. I'm bored. I want to get chased. And as the man thought it was a joke, started laughing. Call the cops. I want to get chased for real. Call them. And as the local pulled out his phone, Colt started up his engine and screamed, I'm gone. Read about me on the internet and took off towards the bay. And all the locals could think was what the f*** was like that? A now as Colt was flying across the bay towards the light over at the harbor island filled with hotels and docks. It was the perfect place to go to to hide out from the cops and also maybe to find a better boat Colt grabbed his pistol a bag and sprinted towards the hotel But then a security guard starts chasing after him But once the guard saw that pistol he backed off realizing he didn't get paid that much But the guard would call the cops and he would go back to Colt's boat and made sure to take the keys So Colt couldn't get away so that call went out to everyone on the island. The police, security guards, armed citizens were searching. Even the military was looking for Colt now. So with the weapons drawn, search teams are combing the island for the next few hours. Police are patrolling all of the harbors. There was no way Colt was going to get out. At 3.30 a.m., one of the officers walked off of the dock to go to the bathroom. And as he's doing his business, he heard a man run outside, jump in a boat, and take off. God damn it, it was Colt hiding in the bushes, waiting for that perfect moment the entire time. Officers with machine guns and police boats started chasing him out of the bay, but there was no way to actually catch him because the boat that Colt had stolen was fully capable of outrunning the cops, and even better, had a full tank of gas. See, while the ocean was quiet, the roar of the engines could be heard all across the island. And as Colt looked back, watching the police lights fade into the horizon, he couldn't help but smirk. But just as the boat starts what a losing legend. speed, he'd realized he had just hit a sandbar and had beached the boat. He gives it more gas, but it only dug him oh, in even deeper. You see, when Colt was out. looking at the cops, he had missed the boat's GPS warning of the upcoming sandbar, and now he was stuck. His two-year-long run comes down to this. And honestly, he froze and held his gun to his head. Now, for minutes with the officers, he refused to put his hands up until Colt fired one shot at the officers and gassed up the boat, hoping to make some last escape. But the police would pepper the side of his boat with 20 rounds all throughout the boat's hull. As the smoke cleared, Colt rose his hands and he was placed in the handcuffs. He was done. Now, what's insane is that the Bahamian police actually captured Colt without anyone getting killed. That wouldn't happen in the US, let's be honest. Now, Colt was wanted by the FBI, the US Marshals, dozens of police departments, Homeland Security, Canadian Mounties, and the Bahamian government, and they all wanted him to pay for his crimes. But the Bahamian government had their first pick, and man, were they proud of it. Parading Colt around on that perp walk, and with five burglaries, three boat thefts, possession of a loaded firearm, firing at an officer, that's probably going to get you a decade at the infamous thing. Bahamian Fox Hill Prison, considered one of the worst like, prisons no, in the world. But they only had one charge for Colt, and that was not presenting his passport when he entered the country. Colton Harris Moore was captured Sunday in the Bahamas country. after a high-speed boat chase with authorities. He was fined $300, which the U.S. Embassy paid and sent back to the U.S. Police officials, they were all smiling, chuckling, you know, so he got a slap on the wrist, basically. So Is he in jail now? I don't think he's too worried about it. I think he's got some more problems waiting for him in the States. That's a really so. good question. No, he's out. Up at the end. Now, American prosecutors no, had to wrangle 67 felonies in three different countries and wrap it up all into one court case. And honestly, he was looking about 20 to 30 years in prison. Now, Colin had hired one of the most infamous attorneys in the game, the guy that you call when the evidence is stacked against you. John Henry Brown, never heard of it? Ted Bundy's attorney. Now they had calculated the restitution for the planes, the cars, the homes, the search operations at a staggering $1.4 million that Colt was gonna pay. 
Now, remember that whole movie deal he was trying to set up selling his life story? Well, the courts mandated that to pay back all of the victims, he was gonna sell the rights to his life story for a potential movie to Fox Entertainment for $1 million. And then let's say that the victims are paid back in full one day, he still could never make money from anything about his life story. We're talking books, t-shirts, video games, anything. And while this may seem harsh, the courts wanted it to be known that crime doesn't pay. Now, Attorney Brown's specialty isn't defending the crimes, but rather why they happen. Now, they showed that Colt's home life really was that bad. His mom never fed him, his dad never paid the child support, his mom drank during her pregnancy and diagnosed with fetal alcohol syndrome, and Colt said he was gonna go to college after this and he was gonna get his life together. And the court felt sympathy for Colt, including the judge, stating, I think this case is a tragedy, but also a triumph of human spirit. I sympathize with the defendant for his terrible upbringing that he had. It was a tragedy he had to steal food to endure an alcoholic and abusive mother. But nevertheless, the sentence is six years. I wish him well. Now, a decade later and out of prison, we don't know much about Colt, about what he's up to today. Now, from the few interviews he's given, he spoke about hating the moniker the Barefoot Bandit, and he wishes to move on from that. And now, I actually contacted Colt to honestly hear his side of the story. What has he been up to? What is he doing? But I got no response. I called him, emailed him, even visited him in Washington. Friends say that uh, he changed his number and he went off of the grid, and no one knows where he's really at. He went ghost. Bro went ghost. And I don't blame he, him. Probably, he probably has a secret. He probably has a secret family by now, or probably will have one. Yeah. I mean, I think he just probably what wants these criminals to usually do. Like after after they get out after they get out of jail, they usually just have secret families and just never show their face again. Yeah, I mean, I think he, he just wants to name. move on with, like he said, just wants to move on with his life. And he probably he's changed done with his that. name legally too, so people don't know who he is. So, uh, so here's what I think of it, right? I think uh, the reason he's not like trying to keep the moniker is because he realizes he fucked up when he was a kid, and that was and that was his way out of that shitty situation with his mother and with the life and upbringing that he had. And he Definitely. he figured that's the way to go. He saw the Facebook like or the Facebook fan page like blow up. He saw like the news announcements. He saw all this attention coming to him that he never would have gotten. And probably now, I bet you from all those escapades, he got Riz. He's a Riz Lord. He's a certified Riz Lord. Like not only did he steal multiple planes and boats and evade police, but like Bahamas was literally treating him like a fucking like. Not even as a trophy, as like a fucking special guest that they caught. Which is fucking One of amazing. the most exciting thing to happen to them in ages, that's why. Probably, yeah. Yeah. But either way, um, I honestly feel like, yeah, his crimes were bad. I don't think he should, like, I don't, I don't think just because he did all that shit when he was like 15 to like 18 or 17 or whatever... I don't I don't think like he needs to be held to the degree of being a full blown criminal because Yeah, I don't again, think, it was just yeah, him running away like and trying to escape from a shitty situation he had no power in. And not only that too, but the fact he didn't even kill anybody, right? The fact that he didn't kill anybody or do anything, like just shows that he wasn't he's not no evil criminal at all. Because that's the thing. Um Let's say, um, let's let's say Colton was like a fucked up person, right? And like, let's say he walked out and saw those kids in the car. A fucked up human being would shot those kids and ki and killed cops and done all that shit, right? On top, but of Colton that, didn't do that. He, he would have shot at the. And not only that, but you think a fucked to? up person that's stealing all this money and shit would donate to an animal hospital? No, they wouldn't, because they care about themselves way too much. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely not innocent 100% in a lot of what he did. No, he's at not. At the same time, like, he did his trial. He's free now. And he's probably, like, guy. He, he's probably got a family or some shit. And that's why he's staying quiet about it. Because, like, he doesn't want all of that attention all of the time. Is probably what it is. I bet you. And he probably doesn't want. And he probably doesn't want his part. Like if he does have family, he doesn't want his family like dragged into it or like getting like. His he probably changed his shit. name. Yeah, but that's what that's what I think. I bet you he probably takes a vacation to Bahamas. I bet you they gave. I bet you the Bahama like police were like, "You can come to our island anytime. We give you the money." 
I bet you. Because they fucking probably love the kid. They probably sat and talked to him and got along with him just fine. Understanding yeah. why he did what he did. Yeah. But Colton, yeah, but he changes. No, he probably did change his whole identity. He probably doesn't even go by Colton anymore. Nah, probably not. It's definitely interesting, though, that he had a 15,000 yeah. fucking fan page. And then merch being sold about him, a video or a movie rights for like 1.3 million. Um, probably, I know there's a book. I was looking up uh, his book, and that's even selling a lot too. So, no doubt, like, I think at the end of the day, like, he probably made a good bit of chunk. Uh, of change mm-hmm. off of everything that happened, yeah. even though the uh, well, that he no. is there any other is there any other is there any other things you have to say before we end? Well, all the money that he got went to uh, uh, the victims. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It did. Is there any a perp? Oz, you have anything? I well, I I just like to say I think the guy's a legend. He's a little. He's my little hero. Yeah. Like he honestly, hold he on. did what I he had to do because he hold had on. to do it. And he didn't know any other way to do it because he clearly wasn't that well schooled. But he was fucking. Mm-hmm. Inte- it was intelligent. He was smart. So like, that's what he decided to do. But I think mm-hmm. once he got in a little bit too deep, that was when the guns came out. Like when he started taking guns because he's like, maybe they're just gonna kill me. Like yeah. I need to protect myself. So like, I don't think he was out to actually hurt anyone because he never ever ever did that ever. Just. Yeah, he wanted to protect himself. I think it was just yeah, yeah. The whole thing was just a series of survival. Yeah, he was just trying really. to protect himself. Yep, he's just trying to live. Oh, yeah, by the way, and... um, Colton, or if you change your name, um, a barefoot bandit. If you're watching this somehow and you want to do an interview, reach out to me. I'll do an interview with you. Any, reach out uh, to me, bro. Anything you want to add? Perp, to do you have anything on? before we end? Perp, no, no, I don't. Um, I I wanted to finish what I was saying. I just right, I, I respect ahead. this man because even though he broke the law, even though he broke what we conventionally call the law, he didn't hurt anyone. He did he didn't like cause any real damage other than stealing people's insured crap that they're going to get back anyway. Like and I think that that what was his name Harley Davidson Iron Wing. <laughs> yeah. Is that his name? Yeah, Harley, that guy. Harley, I think- Harley Iron Wing Davidson. Yeah, yeah. I think that guy, like, taught him something when they went on that first robbery. He's like, you know, don't feel guilty about this because it's all insured. Like, you, you're not – when we're not hurting anyone, everyone's cool. Like, Yeah. And I think he, I think he took that to heart. Like, I don't think he genuinely yeah. wanted to, to damage or destroy anyone's lives. He just wanted to live, bro. He just yeah, wanted to Yeah, because that's the thing. It's like there will be a lot of people – like if there was a lot of people who had that who had, who had that knowledge like Colton did, they would have used it for evil 1,000%. Or there would be people like – because Colton had a ch- – because he, he had a gun and shit. Like Colton had a chance to kill people, but instead he just fired warning shots because he did not want to hurt anybody. I wonder how many people he carjacked. I wonder if he car he probably didn't carjack anybody. He probably just straight up broke into the cars or stole the keys usually. That's what he was doing. He was stealing cars. Yeah, he didn't and carjack instead anybody. Of, he just instead of going to the servo, like instead of going to the servo, like the petrol station or whatever, to fill up because you get caught, he'd just ditch and grab another car. So he'd just find another one on the street and go, please, Lord, please be at least half a tank. And he'd jump in and go. That, that, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. no, um, yeah, so but, there's no but he never right. like hurt anybody though. And that's actually like really respectable because, like I said before, um, people would just fucking use it to hurt people. And there's a lot of heartless people out there. The you know, only that time would... that he ever threatened anyone was that that guy that came home at three o'clock in the morning with his family. But for all you know, that could have been an IR laser pointer. You know those things you could buy for like two yeah. bucks. Yeah, no, honestly, it I mean, my criticism though. still no, stands no. about that guy. Like, I don't think he yeah. should have left his kids there because, like I said, like, yeah, he did. He was protecting his family, but and it was three in the morning, and you can give him that excuse. But at the same time, it's like, what if Colton was like mentally not well, and his whole family could just been murdered because you just left your kids in a car with a guy who's crazy because like i said yeah you locked him in the basement but like i said 
um, people, people are fucking crazy and dumb. And they yeah, because that's the thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish because I'm about to I'm about to say the scenario. Um, the like those people that are so fucked up. Like if the dad like went and like left to the neighbor's house, the guy could have just punched the door until it broke and just walked out and then killed people. Because people are actually like that. Because I've watched like a bunch of investigate. Because I because the reason why I know all this stuff because I watch the investigation channel and I see a lot of crimes of like people like locking people in the basement and shit and then walking up to call the police and then these people just punch the door and then go up and just fucking choke the shit out of the people because they're fucking fucked up in the head america is a very very different place from where i live but and that's like in, why also, in, that's why I'm really critical about it because I've seen like a few stories like this where they lock them in the basement, the person just goes up, calls nine one one, and then the person just punches like. Oh, if this was a different story, we wouldn't be talking about. Yeah, this. no, it's a different story. No, I know, but, but I'm just saying, like, uh, it could have. No, 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 I wish you don't understand. I said it could have went like that if Colton was fucked in the head. That's why I bring it up. I in my country, we um. Uh, gonna make a point earlier, but go ahead on. Oh, was he? Oh, I was just is gonna there say, anything in, in else my country, you want to add we... before we end it? Go ahead, Oz. I was just gonna say, in my country, like we sort of look up to people like that. You know how, like people look up to like Robin Hood. He didn't steal from the rich and give to the poor, but he never hurt anyone. He was just trying to do his thing. Like, yeah, a a, a large segment of. My country would code. would respect him because he's the underdog and like he was just trying to live, just trying to survive. He wasn't hurting anyone. Just yeah, yeah. yeah. So and there's a lot of like darker cases we cover too, where people do hurt people and shit. Hmm. Yeah, I felt like it was nice uh, since it's my return after like three or four, however many episodes it's been, to have a story where we aren't. Yeah, fucking, plus the story uh, is like so lighthearted. I didn't even get mad once. Fucking... I didn't rage. I didn't like. I didn't like no. find anything dark. This is like a, such a lighthearted story, but like this, because yeah. this, this shows like even criminals can be good people because he didn't hurt anybody. He was actually like donating the money he stole to like for good causes and shit. It just shows like even criminals that do bad things can change their life and still be good. I'd still be pissed if someone crashed my $700,000 fucking airplane. Oh yeah, no, I'll still be pissed too. But they got it's the insured. Money. It's insured, mate. You'll be fine. Yeah, but, but I mean, I'll still I mean, be pissed about it. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, but how long is it gonna take for the insurance company to actually pay out? Yeah. No, just imagine just going to the airfield. Where's my plane? Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna get in contact with the phone. Yet again, the um, yet again. Um, I don't know. I don't. Hold on, hold on. I don't know about all of them, but I do know like some of them like left their keys in there. So you can't really blame Colton for that because he um, left so, your keys in there. No. So the reason why the keys are in a uh, private plane airfield is because uh, what if someone has to move your plane? Yeah. It's just like I'm gonna be honest. If I had a private plane, I'd be keeping that shit on my car key, and then a spare in the fucking plane hidden somewhere. Uh, well, um, so uh, nowadays, uh, what they do is uh, people that um need a spare key for like uh, oh, we got a hurry, so you gotta feel bad. yeah, but uh, they lock it in a lockbox, like at a car dealership. Yeah, there's a lockbox. Yeah, yeah. To stop All right. Is there anything else happen. before we go? Because we do gotta end it. Yeah, um, I just appreciate you for having me back on, Trent. It's been a long while. I appreciate sharing. Yeah, it's and been Irish a long while. On. I mean, uh, um, which I will tease this. Um, I um, I will be addressing why Tim's and a little bit Cole Fire of why they're not on the show in the next episode. So if you guys want to know why Cole Fire and Tim's are not on the next episode, please um, are not going to be on the show anymore. Please watch the next episode. But anyways, it's been me. Your boy Triton, thank you, Oz, Sheriff, Irish, and our new host, Perp, for joining this episode. It's been a great episode. Um, God bless the Barefoot Bandit, and God, please make sure you make the Barefoot Bandit's life um, great. And if you like the show, make sure you subscribe. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the like button. Anyways, dislike button is gone. And make sure you comment your thoughts. And it's been me, your boy Triton, and it's been the Ravencast, and we're signing out. Peace.